What's up guys, it's me, the Don Fnatic, and welcome to week 3 of the Pokemon uh, GBA D-League Season 3, Week 3 Team Builder. I got there in the end. Um, this week we're up against TTM Jolt, uh, part of the Token Minorities, host of the March Madness and Summer Showdown tournaments. Um, absolutely lovely dude, I can't rate this guy highly enough um great sport really good at mons has a great channel going i uh, believe he's commissioner of the mpl and uh, he's worked really hard to be at the sort of level he is you know uh in in the draft format today he's also a member uh, the other member of the ppl representing ppl in the gba this season um he is definitely the better player out of the two like representing the ppl um so uh, i'm obviously supporting him this season um I've only ever played him once in league format and I did win, um, mainly because he bought a Storley team and I bought like a counter Storley team just by the off chance and, and we did grind out the win, it was a Wi-Fi battle, it lasted the whole hour, it was it was a dark time for both of us, we both agreed never to do that again, so um, sort of going into Jolt's draft, uh, I am I was absolutely terrified at the three games I've had to build for so far. By, ha by by millions of miles, this is my worst matchup. Um, there are a couple of things in my draft which do great work to his team. The rest of my team just gets shat on by his by his offensive core. Um, I'll go over it briefly. Um, I did have this battle like a week ago, um, and I did make this team a week ago. So sorry if I have kind of forgotten what my plan was for these things. Um, but uh, it, it was really hard for me to battle. Um, I had limited time, and uh, I had the battle. Like I built the team and then had the battle about half an hour later. So if I, I didn't have much of a chance to think about, you know, if there are any changes I want, I usually make a team really far in advance and then just kind of have like random brain waves during the week. Think actually this would be like a genius set for me to bring kind of thing. So um, let's just get into the team. We're not going to waffle. Um, actually, quickly before we get into my team, we can see Jolt's draft on my screen. Um, you should be familiar with my draft by now, but is there just in case you need to uh, familiarise yourself? Uh, Jolt's team is Mew, Mega Kangaskhan, Nido Queen, Tornadus T, Kabalion, Seismitoad, Zoroark, Diancie, Rotom Heat, Gorgeist, and Scolipede. Absolutely terrifying. Luckily, Scolipede can't baton pass the speed boost. Doesn't mean it's not a threat on its own, which it absolutely is. I've tried to draft Scolipede multiple times recently. Um, because fairies are a nuisance, especially all the tapus, um, three of the four which are obviously very prominent in the league format. Um, Scolipede just deals them really well. Z moves make it an incredibly good offensive mon, but it always gets taken because people are realizing. Well, I think people have always realized, you know, it's an incredible mon. Things that stand out basically: Mega Kangaskhan is Mega Kangaskhan. It's disgusting, even with its nerf. Um, Nido Queen is Nido Queen again. Sheer force, defensive, can still do a decent amount of damage and take decent hits. Um, Tornadus is massive against my team. Um, obviously Megalopony outspeeds it, but I will lose one-on-one -on -one to that Tornadus T easily. Um, I mean, Seism Toad is, is fat, and we love God Toad. Uh, it's, it's a great mod. Mew is just fat, but you can never tell what Mew's gonna do. Um, and that's definitely the case with this. It could be a multitude of different things. Zorok is scary, pursuit trapping, something like my um, Staraptor weakening that thing, something like my Latias here, as you can see. Um, you know, it does get the flamethrower to hit the Latias. Uh, sorry, not the Latias, the Registeel. It does get the Sludge Bomb to potentially hit the Clefable. You know, uh, lots of things, things on this team. And then he's just got Fat, Gorgeist, Rotom, Diancie. Diancie even has an incredible matchup against me this week. No matter what team I brought, my team just got shredded apart by Diancie. So, you know, his team just matched up incredibly well. Outside of a couple of things, which I felt like uh, matched up well, being Megalopony, because it does outspeed his draft. Um, the Crocodile, because he has got the Nido Queen Mew. Um, the Cavalian, if he's defensive, Diancie. The Gorgeist, the Rotom Heat. Um, if I want to hit it with, like, a, you know, like rock moves, you know. It hits a lot of his team incredibly hard. Um, so, I mean, uh, other than Lopini and Crocodiles, which is like one of the first things I thought of bringing, I really had no idea what else I wanted to bring because I, I just couldn't think of anything that, that really fit this really well. And I watched um, the power rankings for week two just a little while ago, earlier this morning, and they were like, Jack, you need to start going into games with a game plan, which, I, you know what, I completely agree. Um, I already know that my win last week was lucky, um, but I found it incredibly hard to go in with a win condition this week because it was I, I don't feel like I had any um, 
What I will do again, this is like a recurring theme now, special shout out to Floatzel, because uh, based on the team which Dolk did bring to the battle, we won't go into that now, we'll let you see that tomorrow. Sort of on reflection, it actually does really well against him. Uh, Nido Queen, uh, the Diancy and the Rotom Heat all hit super effective by that stab water. Um, Zorok won't be taking any hits very well, because it's a Zorok. Again, with Scolopede, you know, if he's an offensive set, it's not going to be taking many hits. You know, it gets Ice Punch coverage, so that automatically hits the Tornadus and the Needle Queen as well. Obviously, Waterfall hits that anyway. Uh, and the Gorgeist with Crunch as well, hitting the Mew and the Gorgeist. And as you can see, it just kind of slowly crept up as a threat. Um, originally had an agility set with uh, Volterian Z on, on the team. Uh, we had to bin that in the end, unfortunately. Um, but we'll go over the team now. I don't want to keep too long because I don't want to make these videos too long. And I'll also try and put some less stressful music in this video, um, as requested by um, one of you guys last week. So that is definitely noted. So, first of all, we're going to go straight in with Megalopony. Um, fake out, return, drain punch, high jump kick. I don't really need anything else um, for, for this team. Ice Punch, I mean, Return does more than Ice Punch uh, to the Tornadus and the Neo Queen. I might as well just click Return. Um, obviously, he can't switch in his Ghost to Lopany. Well, he can because it won't do much, but, you know, it, it still takes a hit. So, um, he has got lots of answers, but he's also got things that just die to it. So, obviously, Neo Queen can switch in on fighting moves. And Mew can switch in on fighting moves. Um, he has got the Kabalion, which is weak to it. He's got the Mega Kang, which is weak to it. The Zorok, which is weak to it. You know, uh, he needs these fighting type switch-ins, which he's got lots of, but um, I'll go away Discord. Um, we, I mean, th this is like the only kind of coverage I need. Fake Out, I felt like I would need a bit of priority this week, because it would let me do some good damage to Tornadus, kind of nullify its regenerator a bit, um, and also outspeed it, obviously, if it's like a Scarfed variant. Um, it's also useful for things like Sucker Punch the Rock. Um, what else could it be? Any kind of like priority on Mew, so Vacuum Wave, Sucker Punch. Um, any other kind of priority music can get. Uh, you know, it beats all of that and it also does some good damage to Scolopede, chip damage on that thing. So, um, I didn't really feel like anything else was really necessary. Um, I ju all I had to do really sort of EV-wise was make sure I outsped the Tornadus. Um, I think there's quite a few things you could have bought Scarf, which I would have outsped, which would have outsped me regardless if I was max, you know, speed or not. So, quite simple, uh, just chucking it rest of, the rest of the HP to make it as bulky as possible. That was pretty much it. There wasn't really much else I think I really needed for Loppy to make it successful this week. I did debate whether bringing Healing Wish to keep some of my offense, other like offensive things like Crocodile healthy would be any use or not, but uh, this was the set we rolled with in the end. So, uh, quite a simple Loppy set, really. Uh, next up, we go with Latias. With the Soldier, because looking at his team, he hasn't really got a dragon. Well, he hasn't got a fairy other than Diancy. Um, which I was very, you know, I was thinking would probably come, if anything, probably offensive, because it does really well offensively against my draft. Um, but I, I have Energy Ball for that. It wouldn't be doing too much. I think it does like 40% to defensive one, which is still a decent amount of damage. If I catch it with a Psychic with the Soul Dew boost and an Energy Ball, that thing's nearly dead. Um, I'm willing to trade my Latias. I can take a Moonblast comfortably with this thing, and I do have Roost, so I can play around with that. But, you know, um, this thing, I would happily trade Latias for, for Diancy, as odd as it sounds. It's not even Mega Diancy. Um, because that Diancy is so threatening to my team, but you know, Dragon Pulse, yeah, sure you can switch in Kabalion, but it's going to be taking a decent hit from Psychic, because uh, Kabalion's special defense isn't the best, and it's neutral. Energy Ball's always got that nice chance of dropping the special defense along with Psychic, and I was, you know, I could have run Dragon uh, Draco Meteor, but I didn't really want to get the drops, because once this thing's in, um, if Tornadus goes, and uh, Scolopede goes, it kind of just does a lot of damage with these moves to his draft. Um, so, I, I guess in hindsight, it might not have been an optimal set, but at the time, I felt like, okay, this is a solid set. I want to try out Soul Juice. See, because obviously it got nerfed since the last generation. Last generation was completely dumb. Um, it was 1.5 times power, so it's like choice specs, but you could switch your moves, and it was boosting Dracos and Psychics and everything. So, you know, um, th this is kind of the set I went for, like an offensive Latias. I felt like I should try that out at some point. I don't want to kind of give it the staple of being a defensive model all the time, but um, I, I kind of felt like it, sort of looking at his his draft that potentially an offensive Latias could do some good work. I'm I'm aware that obviously Mew could run Sucker Punch, make Kangaskhan get Sucker Punch, Needle Queen get Sucker Punch, which I think Jolt did actually bring in the end. I was very aware of that when he had it. Um, 
he do, he does have Zorok with Sucker Punch. Um, Shadow Sneak on Gore, guys. Sucker Punch Room Heat. Um, ridiculous amount of priority which do hit the super effectively, but kind of offensively once I'm in. You know, I can bring it in against uh, the Neo Queen and it's going to do some decent damage to something. So that was kind of my thought there. Next up, we've got the Reggie Steel with the Sugar Berry. I believe I bought the Sugar Berry for the. I must have been the Nido Queen. Um, not entirely sure why, what my thought process was at the time, but we have gone for Seismic Toss, which I am aware is very risky against this team with the Mew potentially being like a substitute set. Didn't think that would be one he brought. Obviously, he could just bring anything with Mew. We don't know what it's going to be, but out of the plethora of moves it gets, I, I didn't think that Substitute would be one. You know, Seismic Toss would do 50 damage to lots of things, um, and it would be four shots, and you know, if I can get Seismic Toss off on Tornadus after Stealth Rocks, that thing's already down to half, so, you know, I can, I can play around uh, with, with Seismic Toss doing good damage. It's a bit odd, I know you see this, but Toxic and Stealth, uh, sorry, Toxic and Thunder Wave. Toxic, mainly because I can to Toxic the Mew, um, provided it doesn't have Taunt, and obviously it won't synchronize back at myself. Um, I can, well, Toxic the Seismic Toad, which is problematic. Toxic with Kangaskhan if it's fat. Um, Needer Queen's obviously a bit of a problem to this thing, which is probably why I had the Sugar Berry. Get that nice seismic toss damage off. Thunder Wave was there basically for the Tornadus uh, or the Zorok. Any of his fast things, the Scolopede as well. Um, can't really do too much. That's what the Sugar Berry was for, the Earthquake from a Scolopede if it was setting up. Um, you know, I could slow that thing down, maybe just give Lopany a chance. I know obviously Paralysis got nerfed and Thunder Wave got nerfed, but I felt like having them two things, giving me speed control and bolt control, you know, would be quite nice to have. And then the Stealth Rocks, which it matches up decently well against his team. He's got the Scolopede, he's got the Rotom, he's got the Tornadus, all weak to rocks. So three of his 11 Mons are weak to rocks, which is pretty decent. There's a chance that one of them is going to be coming. Um, so Stealth Rocks would be useful if I can get them up. The only dif the difficulty I will have with Red Steel is how am I going to get them up? Because um, if Nita Queen comes in, I could probably I could take a hit. But, you know, I need this thing as healthy as possible. And the fact I didn't have leftovers, I have it sacrificed for um, a berry. means I can't obviously recover my health. Um, I think Diancy is probably my best bet. Uh, this is one of the few things I have that can I say, deal with Diancy. But it even gets earth power. So, again, I am max defense because I need it to take on the Kang. I need it to take on the potential Zorok if he is physical. Um, and the Scolopede. I had to because literally nothing else in my draft deals with the Scolopede. Um, so that was uh, Steely Girl. Next up we have got the Skuntank, one of my two dark types. He has got um, one, two, two dark resists. Um, one being Zorok, which I'm not going to classify as a dark resist because it is so frail. Um, well, Cabalion does, but this thing does get Flamethrower. As you can see, I'm running Flamethrower, so, you know, I'm, I'm happy to take some hits. If you want, you know, uh, I basically I bought this thing because I wanted extra Pursuit. Pursuit can deal with the Mew. Mew is probably the main thing that's going to stop Lopin in this game. Um, it's going to hit any U-turning Tornadoses. Pretty much none fires the Regenerator. This is kind of like my main thing. I wanted to bring, I needed Defog, mainly, because I felt like Staraptor could be a huge threat to his team as well, depending on the sets of Monty brings. Um... I believe I originally might have put this in when I had Volcarona in the team, which may be why it seems a bit odd, but you know, Flamethrower and Sucker Punch as well. Um, I felt like priority was quite important, especially if I can just get some last ditch hits off on, say for example, the Scolopede, the Gorgeist, the Ro well, anything really, apart from Diancy, um, or Cabalion. Um, you know, that Sucker Punch stab, Sucker Punch could do some nice damage. I bought Special Defensive just because it was the best sort of thing I could bring, bulky, Special Defensive wise. Clefable really has a bad matchup against Jolt. There was no way I was bringing it. I was tempted because Jolt loves this thing, or loves Clefable, but it, the matchup is just so bad. I mean, I'll probably I'd lose to Scolopede. I would lose to Cabalion, lose to Nida Queen, probably lose to Mew, probably lose to Mega Kangaskhan. So uh, there was no way I was bringing it, and it was kind of like my best option for like some special bulk, which is why I bought it. And I needed the defog. I needed some sort of hazard removal, and I wasn't willing to put. Um, Latias to be, you know, some kind of special defensive set. So, um, just pursuit to pursuit trap the Mew and anything really stop things from you turning and vault switching around. Defog to get rid of any sort of hazards because I believe um, he obviously he can set up the spikes and toxic spikes with Scolopede. Nice to have a grounded poison type. So if I can't get a defog off, I can at least get the um, the toxic spikes gone. Admittedly. I have three things which aren't affected by them, but it would uh, four things which aren't affected by them, so it's not very likely. Um, but you know, it wouldn't be very good for me to have uh, the Lopany and the 
Crocodile we can buy them. So I'm uh, pretty sure that was my thought process behind the Scun Tank. Next up, we have got the Staraptor, the Choice Scarfer. Um, star of the show last week really did win me the game. If I didn't have that thing, I mean, it, it matched up against the team so well, you know, it was, it was kind of inevitable it was going to happen, I feel. Um, not quite as good team matchup this time, but again, it's just, I, it was quite hard to sort of throw in some offensive things at this point because Staraptor, it does well against his team. He he doesn't really have a switch in, um, other than Diancie. I was so close to running Steel Wing over U-turn on this, but I felt like I needed U-turn for the momentum, especially as he can easily switch into the Seismitoad, he can easily switch into the Cabalion, he can easily switch into the Nida Queen, um, easy switch into the Mew, easy switch into the Gorgas, easy switch into the... Basically, if I ran Steel Wing for Diancie, he just got a free switch into everything else, so... I didn't bring bringing it, bringing it, close combat done something like 30%, Brave Bird done something like 20%, but Brave Bird does a lot to the rest of his team, you know, it'll, uh, I think it one-shots the Tornadus if it's not defensive, it'll kill the Zorok, kill Gorgeist, kill the Scolopede, um, it will kill the, well, it won't kill the Queen, but it'll do a hell of a lot, wouldn't kill the Kang, but again, does a hell of a lot, and this is why Stealth Rock is important, because I think it probably does make the difference between kills and not, uh, Mew is just fat, but again, if I can just get a solid 60% off or something with a Brave Bird, I'm happy with that because I can then apply some offensive pressure with something like the Lopini with the Crocodile, anything like that, you know. Um, so this is just kind of like a nuke to hit things as hard as possible. I felt like it was my best offensive bring. There was, I, like I said, there was deliberation between Floatzel as well coming. Um, and actually there was a very good chance of me bringing offensive Delmise. I did consider that over this thing. But I just felt like I needed the Choice Scarfer to deal with any sort of rogue Scarfers of his own. The EV wise, like I have to run max speed because I need to run the risk of speed time with Scarf Mew, which I felt was like a possibility. Um, it could, I mean, maybe obviously defensive was a bit more obvious because of the lop, but I did feel like he had things like uh, the, uh, not the companion, sorry, Seismic Toe could deal with it quite well. Dance he could deal with it quite well. Um, you know, I, I felt like Mew might not be his best art. His answer to it but there was a good chance it would be and you know a scarf mew is always scary because you run the coverage for team and just do chip damage continuously and you know that that would be a great threat to my team so i felt like i had to run max speed and you know jolly was needed again to run the speed tie with the mew if he was going to bring be jolly scarf so final mon um it's probably like the best the, the biggest set i probably regret um after actually facing the battle crocodile was definitely going to come this week um Maybe, I don't know if Assault Vest was the best choice, or if Intimidate was the best choice, if it could have been like a Scarf Moxie set, for example. Um, but we are Earthquake, Knockoff, Pursuit, Stone Edge. Pursuit again, stops in, like, obviously the U-turn, the uh, sorry, the Intimidate kind of baits a U-turn out from something like the Tornadus. Um, or the Mew, if it wants to do it, uh, or the Zorok. Um, and I can pursue them just for some extra damage. Pursuit will do a lot to Mew. Stone Edge hits that Rotom. Knockoff is knockoff. It does knockoff things. And Earthquake is, you know, Earthquake. It does a good amount. I mean, it does a good amount of work to his team, to be honest. It hits Diancie super effective. It hits the Cavalian super effective. It hits the Needle Queen super effective. You know, Stone Edge hits the Scolopede super effective. Rotom Heat is super effective. And then Knockoff and Pursuit hits the uh, the remaining uh, pretty hard. You know, Gorgeist, uh, the... Uh, and the Mew, basically, but Knockoff will do a lot of damage to anything, so I, I wanted to run Adamant on this thing, but I then decided to speed creep something. Um, it's got 141 speed. I think it was to outspeed max speed uh, Needle Queen, because offensive Needle Queen just kind of destroys me a little bit. It's fat enough to, to take a couple of hits and, you know, dent me or kill a few things on my team, so I was very scared that he could potentially bring an offensive Needle Queen. So I think that's why I decided to to do it. And Assault Vest with Intimidate, you know, it's just like a solid bit of, you know, bulk. I felt with Registeel and Skuntank as my only bulky mons this week, you know, the extra bulk could be appreciated. Um, but maybe, you know, if there was some more offensive prowess in this set. So if I did go Adamant like planned, if I did maybe run Scarf, if I did run Band, if I did run Black Glasses, if I did run Expert Belt, something like that. This crocodile could, you know, potentially hit a bit harder against this team, which really doesn't appreciate it. Um, I think the one thing that lets it down in this matchup is like the speed. While obviously it hits things really hard, um, so it'll hit the Kang with Earthquake hard, Need a Queen, uh, Tornadus it can hit with the Stone Edge, Mew it can hit with a Knock Off and Pursuit, um, Cabalion, you know, like the things I hit super effective, so Mew, Cabalion, um, the da -da 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 -da, Diancy, the Rotom Heat, and the Gorgeist, uh, and the Scolopede as well. So Scolopede. 
Cavalian and Tornado Sam, you all outspeed me naturally, so while I am offensively really good against them, if he's got an offensive set, he'll just take me out. Uh, the Diancy hits me super effective with Moonblast and probably will outbulk me, and the Earthquakes he'll live, and I'll die to Moonblasts. Um, Rotom Heat can just probably hit me with a couple of overheats, you know, if, uh, if I'm missing Stone Edges. Gorgeist, you know, it'll, it'll take a knockoff or an earthquake and it'll do massive amounts of damage or burn me. So, while offensively it kind of hits a lot of these things hard, it's going to be quite hard to play around with that. So, um, that's the team. I'm not going to try and go on about it anymore because it's 20 minutes long this video now. So, um, make sure you leave a note of what you think of, you know, how the team will perform. Um, I, I'll tell you this, I wasn't very confident going into the game against Chalk because I did feel like my matchup was just horrendous. Um, and we'll see how it goes in the actual game uh, tomorrow. But if you guys did enjoy, make sure you leave a like uh, on the video. Comments are always appreciated. Much prefer comments to the uh, the likes. Make sure you check out links to Jolt's uh, Twitter and YouTube below. And uh, I think that should be everything. So I'll let you guys crack on with the rest of your evening. And I'll see you tomorrow for week three versus Jolt in the GBA DLE. Cheerio.